Hello friends, uh, we are back with a new video, but this video is not for common man. This is for microbiologists. Actually, um, I was working today in the morning in my study and I found uh, my old book around, uh, on microbiology. It was written by my professor, K.D. Chatterjee. And he was my professor and of microbiology and he was my thesis guide also. So he, that book, whole book came to my hand and I recalled his memory. And uh, I thought I should make one video regarding some of his techniques, his uni universal and unique techniques of microbiology. So what he taught us about the fixation. So there is a, there is a process in microbiology it's called fixation, the fungal fixation or microbial fixation or some parasite fixation and all that. So here I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate one fixation process that is. Uh, formal saline dilithyl ether fixation process so what here we use is a formal formal uh, saline we, we he actually used the word formal not formal because it comes from formic acid so it is called formal the formaldehyde not formaldehyde so therefore he used to use it uh, actually this word so formal saline therefore we are going to use the word formal saline there is nothing, just a combination of formaldehyde and saline, normal sodium chloride solution. The ratio I will, if you want, I can put it in the description box. Actually, the whole fixation process I'll, I can send him. So, whoever wants, just send his WhatsApp number or email ID in the description by the comments box and I'll send you the whole thing. So, that's not the important thing. But here, they I'll just include the process, that fixation process, fungal fixation process. So, here we have a fungal base for that, we what we need. So, that's the setup. So what we need? We need a fungal base that is already pre-centrifuged fungal base. This centrifuge part I have not included in the video. This will take time. So I have not included the centrifugal part. So we have to centrifuge it, this fungal base. This is Aspiris fungary fungus. As you can see, this has been taken 2 ml in the centrifuge and it has been in the centrifuge tube and it has been centrifuged. So so there is a centrifuge. So this uh, this part, the centrifuge part, we will use. And uh, this is the, then a second chemical is here. It is used. This is called formal saline. This is the formal formal saline uh, solution, the main solution. And we need another solution that is the emulsifying base, that is the dilithyl ether. So these two these two chemicals we will be using, and uh, we will be preparing the fixing of this uh, fungal body. The fungal body is needed to be fixed because one thing just I'll have to explain that uh, whenever we see the whenever we're going to stain the fungus or rather the fungal body or parasite or whatever, especially the parasites, the living organisms, the parasites are living organisms and fungals are also living organisms. So bacteria are also living organisms, everything is living organisms. There is losing we deal in microbiology are living organisms. So there we therefore they contain the cell inside the body, cellular part of the body. Whenever we put, if, if we put directly, if we fix, try to fix, we stain them. If we apply a stain directly, if we apply a stain, any kind of stain. So whatever the stain is, is a fluorescent stain, be a fluorescent stain, it can be a uh, dark field, bright field stain, it can be any, any stain, eosin dyes, any, 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 any type of stain, doesn't matter. But uh, the, what thing will happen if we directly if we stain, the cells will rupture. So the total morphology will change. Or rather it will disturb, it will become disturbed, it will be spoiled. So therefore we need to fix the fungus body, fungal matter, the mix of fungus or the parasite, whatever you have seen, we want to see under microscope, whether it is a dark field or bright field microscope, whether it is a fluorescent microscope and else. So we have to fix it before making a permanent slide, before making it stain. So we have to fix it. This, this fixation process we are going, I am going to demonstrate. This is a very unique fixation process. We don't need any any um, dangerous liquid like picric acid and all that. So Dr. K. D. Charaji has Professor K. D. Charaji has uh, introduced a very beautiful and unique process, a very simple process, by using a solution of formal saline and uh, dilithyl ether. Just these two salines are required, so we can fix it with this help of these two sites, these two chemicals. So we are going to demonstrate this. The process is very simple. Just we will take the fungal base, will be fungal base. We, we will be separating the fungal base. We will be separating the fluid supernatant just with a 100 ml pipette, just a 1 ml pipette. We are just going to 
separate the supernatant. This is the agar part. We are just separating the agar. As you can see, we are just separating the agar. Now the fungal part is almost ready. This is ready. So now we are going to put this. So what you are going to do now is that we will be mixing uh, this formal saline. Just 1 ml formal saline will be mixed in this fungal base. Just with the fungal base. This is 1 ml. This is 1 ml. And we are just going to take the tube and we are just going to mix it. And just adequately we are going to mix it. The fungal part. This is going to be mixed. This is wonderfully getting mixed. So, we are just, this mixture should be done very carefully. This mixing should be done very carefully. Otherwise, this will over, spill over and we will lose everything. So, we are just going to fix it. Just centrifuge. Just dipping that tip of the pipette and just mixing it. So that is done. So now we will just shake the tube. The rest part will mix and just keep it there and discard the tip. So now it is over. So now we will wait for a few seconds just to get this thing ready. Just shaking it, again shaking it. And you can see just shaking it. This is just simple shaking and nothing. Just to break the lesser part inside the tube and it is done. So now we are what we are going to do is to we will be adding again we will be going to add 1 ml of dilithal ether. Now this is very important. This dilithal ether will going to make a emulsification layer. This is organic compound. So this will make a organic and very volatile compound. It is a very volatile tendency. As you can see, it is very volatile. So just put it and we will be doing it. This is forming as you can see. It has formed two layers already. You see it very closely. I will just show it very closely. Just a second, I will show it closely. So you can see it has formed two layers. First layer, top layer is the organic layer and the second layer is the inorganic layer. So here you also you can see on this camera because I am using two cameras as you can see. I am using two cameras to make a good video. So this is the fungal base and above the above it this is the organic layer. So just you can see the tube. Uh, now you can see the tube. So this is the fungal part, fungal formal saline part, and this is the agar part. Uh, is rect uh, sorry, the dilithal ether part or the ether part. So these two are forming these two organic layer and the inorganic layer, inorganic biological layer. So this actually is fixing the whole fungus. These two layers are comparatively working and they are fixing the layer, fixing the matter. So this we will just shake. This we will just shake and and shaking and vigorous shaking. After that, it is mixing. You see, it is now it is you see it is mixed. Now it is mixed. It is thoroughly mixed. Now we are going to again centrifuge it, but at a very low speed, around the, around two thousand rpm. If the speed should not increase two thousand five hundred rpm, two thousand to two thousand five hundred rpm, we are going to mix, and then for about three minutes. So for about one minute, sorry, for about one minute, we are going to mix and then we will be separating this layer out, this emulsion, this uh, fixing, fixing chemical fixer uh, separation out and we will be putting it in the slide to see more things. So this is regarding fixation. So let us see, we will just going to fix, we will just going to centrifuge and we will be so friends, we are back again with a continuation part of the video. So as you can see, here is the centrifuge part. If you see closely, if you can see closely, there are three layers actually. You can see, if you can see, I don't know whether my camera is very good or not. It may be very bad. 
and so first layer this is the ether layer so this is the emulsion layer and here is the this is the supernatant layer and this is the emulsion layer and the bottom of the tube you can see there is the fungal separation so this is the total emulsion layer has separated the fungus below or fixed the fungus below and has dropped the fungus below due to the, due to the centrifugal action so i will we'll have to discard all this to over three layers and we will take only the fungal part so this is the beauty of the fixation so you can look and this is the thing so this is the beauty of the layer so beauty of this fixation process the total fixation process is having four layers one two three four layers so this is the ether layer these two these three parts these two parts are the emulsion layer and the third part is the fungal layer and the fungus is in the bottom you can see very closely if i move uh, this side if i move you can see the fungus below you can see the fungus so that is the fungus so that is the fungus so here is the fungus so here is the fungus you can see so that is the fungal matter so that much we will have to take out and we will have to put it in this light and we will have to stain it and we can fix it so this is the power beauty of the fixation uh, method devised by my professor my honorable professor and very charity so this is a very beautiful fixation method as you can see so let us begin with the uh, staining method and the other part so for that we need a staining box as you can see this is a staining box this is a staining box this is a staining box and we we'll need some permanent slides for that so and just i'll be taking out one permanent slide so we have to clean this permanent slide by using some tissue paper just a just some layer has if a, if have some moisture or something has accumulated we if we fit some more moisture is found so just apply some alcohol and remove those things this is done this slide is now cleaned so this is a plain slide plain glass slide that is available in any scientific store it is available it's just to clean it and throw away and so here it is now let us take the fungal waste and again with the help of a pipette we are going to remove it so taking the pipette and whole part we are going to remove part by part just the ether is removed then the emulsion base emulsion base and this bit it is done so this part is the fungus part so the fungus part is left and we will be using this so for that we need a as you can see we need a 20 micro ml pipette this is a small pipette as you can see and uh, as i can say this has been given me by one of my very friend who any very good good advisory friend mr shubhrata dev so he is a very good man and he has given me this beton pipette so this i am using for this microbiological experiment so this is the fungal part just given excess matter is been removed and and you discard this tube so no more in use so just put this pipet over and with the help of another glass slide just this is a very round smear and you can see if we, if the slide is if the specimen is fixed very well you will see a very beautiful round shape of this specimen the specimen will not scatter even an unfixed specimen always scatters over the slide it scatters here and there it spots here and there but in a fixed slide, a fixed specimen, when it is specimen is fixed, it will it is having a very beautiful round shape and it will not fall off from the slide like that. If you if you if you just make the slide like this, 
it will not fall off it will remain over there because it is fixed it is immobilized so this is the beauty of the fixation even bovine's fluid you can't do this bovine's will also makes a running sample the samples run away so he used to say professor kerry charles used to say the sample is running out of your slide sample is away afraid of you sometimes he used to said say hey, your sample is afraid of you so that is why so fixation after fixation it won't it won't run away it will just remain like this a so like beautiful shape so what a wonderful shape it has taken so now we are just going to smear this or this camera i can just show you this camera you will very well you can see how the rice is smeared it is just like this very smeary pattern which will occur you just take just smear it like this and it is done so just put this right here you can see the fixation this camera the slide is fixed well fixed you can see it has taken the slide is taken so it is need to be dried so for that time we will be waiting we'll put it in the drying chamber switch on the dry chamber and we will be waiting and uh, this is because this i am showing you detail process is i am showing you because in in future video i have thought he thought that i will make a video over how to make an economically economical microbiological lab in very economically you can make a micro because we don't have money so professor charity is to say that if you go economical then you are a scientist and if you are expensive then you are not a scientist so you have to think about science and you have to think about the economy that how much your pocket can per permit so that you have to think so then you are a scientist expending a billion dollar behind a lab is not a science you can purchase anything from anybody just by asking somebody oh, do this do that do this do that do this thing bring this thing bring that thing and assembling one in a in a place and uh, making a big thing no that is not science the science is that you have to do all each and every component by yourself in a very economical process that is science sometimes he used to make out things out of thrown away thrown away things because that you he used to do because at that time when he was a student that time picric acid or picric acid whatever you say was not available readily and that you that was a licensed item still it is a toxic element and is very explosive explosive element and it is not regularly used in all labs this picric acid and this buins fluid buins fixative fluid is used is is a picric acid uh, supplement have to use picric acid or picric acid for making buins fluid and picric acid picric acid is very dangerous very dangerous it, it should be kept in refrigerator or in a cool place because if it is hot if it is less in a hot place then it will explode so and picric acid is supplied with 50% picric acid and 50% water picric acid is in the bottom and water is placed in the top and the bottle is sealed so that you have to keep in the refrigerator so this is what picric acid is. so picric acid is very dangerous he wouldn't even allowed us to handle picric acid so therefore he discarded buin spray and once he suddenly he said that i won't like buin spray because that is that uses picric acid and picric acid is a very toxic chemical environment unfriendly chemical so therefore he used this method of fixing so one of them one of the fixing is this formosaline dilithium method so that we are going to prepare we are going to here the slide is getting ready so we will be going to fix it so friend we are ready with the slide as you can see the slide has dried up you can see in this camera and also in this camera both the slide has dried up so beautifully dried up you can see the slide has taken the specimen very beautiful this is the area of this fixation if you fix the slide properly it is done it will stick with the slide it will not go run away your sample is running away 
it is afraid this type of things you won't be able to you won't be able to hear from your professors so that these things without now so now we are going to stain this first of all we are going to stain this with hemotoxin uh, hemotoxin and eosin stain so yeah here is a here Harris hemotoxin stain just uh, we will take one pipette one ml pipette and one ml micro pipette and just put some hemotoxin over the slide So just to cover the slide, the slide to be needed to be covered. So here the hematoxin needs to be covered. The whole specimen should be covered, otherwise the slide will not work, the stain will not work. So this is extra stain is over here and you have to put it. And this is this was also one procedure of psychiatric charity. Don't waste stain. Hmm, just Pouring the stain, whole bottle of the stain over the slide, won't do. So don't do that, used to say. Collect the excess stain from the other side of the slide and put on the same, same place where the sample is there. So that do that. Don't waste the stain. Because hey, hematoxylin is a very costly element. That time hematoxylin was very costly. And so we have to wait now. So just... Um, so friends, we have started beginning the staining. We have done the hematoxylin and the hematoxylin stain is over. So we have blued the stain. Here also a blueing, that blueing process is used. That same blueing process is used with the help of ammonia. Uh, so that is used, uh, blueing ammonia, ammonia process is used. And after that, now we will be doing the counter stain and this is eosin stain. Eosin is a red dye. This will give the periphery of the fungus. The uh, hematoxylin will give the interior structure, of, show, the, show us the interior structure of the fungus and this eosin will show us the periphery of the fungus. Hematoxylin will become yellow or brownish color in the inside the fungus, fungus medium and this uh, eosin will give us the periphery of the fungus. That is the fungal colony, how much fungal colony has spread and all that that we are going to see in this using dye. This is a red dye as you can see. This is the counter stain. This is just a counter stain. And just wait for one or two seconds. Not very much. This counter stain is not needed very very deeply. The most oxygen actually takes the time to enter the cell. So this is and it is done. So it has taken the red color. So now this is also to be blue or cleared actually. Now this to be need to be cleared off. This excess stain is need to be cleared off. So we can't put this thing, otherwise the whole slide will become red and nothing will be visible. So this we have to blue, blue it again, blue off again. So this is blue, it. this is blueing, and this slide is drained off. Now this we need to clear because the help of this ammonia solution, we are just to clear the excess stain. Excess stain is need to be cleared off. Otherwise, the, the slide will look bad. So this is washed with the help of ammonia. Now we have to clean the slide because this will nothing but this will make our microscope dirty here is slide directly if we put this wet slide in the microscope and suddenly the lens comes and touches the slide then what will happen the microscope will go and i don't know whether sir kd chatterjee will come from somewhere and he will appear before me and he will catch me by his, my ears and say that you have spoiled this thing. Now who is going to pay? So who has told you to keep a red, wet slide in a microscope? So this thing will happen 
so I'm not going to do that I'll put this slide in the chamber drying chamber again I will put it for drying so this is done so now we will see in the microscope for the visualization and the of the fungus so we'll get a bright field vision now this is bright field now what is this bright field now I'm going to explain what is this bright field this bright field is nothing just what we will be allowing the light to pass to the sample from all around and through the sample all around means this field that is the outside periphery field will be bright so the light will come from all side and also through the sample part of the sample and we will be seeing by the contrast of the periphery and inside the sample that is called bright field and dark field is that the periphery will be black and the whole sample only the sample will be illuminated on the specimen will be illuminated so that is called dark field and the fluorescence is that a special ultraviolet light will come from the top to the objective lens, will pass through the objective lens. This is a special type of objective lens. It will pass through the objective lens, it will hit the sample and it will return back. This is a two-way process. The microscope is a two-way. This method is a two-way method and will go into the detector and that image will be formed in the camera. So we are here going to use the dark bright field microscope. Bright field microscope is a very simple microscope, just illuminating from the bottom, pass the light through the sample, the objective will get the light and it will go into the camera. So this is a very simple technique. Dark field microscope needs a special condenser, the dark field condenser. There the background is darkened. The background is darkened and the light only passes through the specimen. So that is the dark field microscope. So that is a different uh, system. Uh, generally those are used for uh, moving for uh, getting the live parasites. Those are the dark field is generally used for watching the live, par live parasites or living parasites and some uh, cells, some live cells like live scriptosporidium and all that. So the slide is dried. And we will be ending the video here and after that we will be going for the microscope presentation. As you can see, the light has been examined under, examining under the microscope. Uh, the, the black spots you see is the colony of the, the interior part of the uh, fungus. Uh, this, this is the fungus colony in front of you. The interior part is in the hematoxylin stain, the outer part is in the uh, by the eucin stain, eucin or safranine stain. Here the safranine has been used instead of eucin. So you can see the safranine stain and inside each part is hematoxylin stain. It's in deep blue or brownish form. So this is the beauty of the fixation as I have told previously in the video that the uh, fungus is stabilizedly fixed and so it looks very beautiful if it is stained. So there is no uh, blasting, there is no cytoplasting or anything else. It is very clear from this slide. There is no cytoplasting. The cytoplasms are very visible clearly. So these are the small, small colonies. You can see the small colony heads, the red, red little bit bluish black, the colony heads. The toxin stain has taken up very beautifully and the magnification is changed to enter the inside the colony. As you can see, we have entered inside a colony and you can see the heads of the microplas microplasms or the aspiri heads actually, the aspiri colony, so very colonies. You can see, we clearly see the sponge type colony over here, sponges, uh, sponge type formation is was scattered over here. So this is the beauty of the fixation process as I am saying. So it is very clear, the slide is very clear and very beautiful looking and the whole total colony is in there and you can see the hematoxylin stains and as well as the eosin stain, eosin stains.